the northeast corner of the United States was once covered primarily by various different forest types prior to European settlement. Despite these forests having a high biomass, that is a relatively large amount of living material in the form of trees, many forests are actually relatively low in biodiversity. Acre after acre dominated by relatively few species of tree. Of course, you get some ground cover and maybe a handful of spring ephemerals. However, pockets of high biodiversity do appear in certain specific habitats. Open biomes such as meadows, bogs, and wetlands can be hotspots for a high number of species. Here we have a wetland adjacent to a river and a large floodplain forest. The lofty oaks and pines common across New England give way to various forbs, shrubs, and aquatic plants. Shorter in stature, but more numerous in species, it is here we find one of the showiest participants in southern New England's ecology. Hibiscus mochuetos, the swamp rose mallow. Occupying wetland margins and riverbanks, the swamp rose mallow looks nearly tropical compared to many familiar New England plants. Never spotted too far from water, it also requires full sun to truly thrive. Highly concentrated around low-lying coastal watersheds, it is abundant across much of the eastern coastal plain from Cape Ann down to Florida, and then across the Gulf Coast. Inland, it is highly disjunct, occupying marshy riverbanks and slow-moving estuaries across the Great Lakes region and rarely the Midwestern Plains. Hibiscus mochueto shares its habitat with many familiar New England wetland plants. Among them are Desmodium canadens, the showy tick trefoil, Cephalanthus occidentalis, a relative of coffee known as buttonbush, Cornus amomum, the silky dogwood seen here in fruit, Acer saccharinum, the silver maple, a very common maple found widely across the eastern U.S. in a variety of hydric conditions, Asclepius incarnata, the swamp milkweed, one of our most water-loving milkweed species, and Impatiens capensis referred to as the Spotted Touch Me Not, another incredibly common inhabitant of eastern mesic and hydric habitats. A member of the cotton family, Malvaceae, Hibiscus mochuetos is a relative of famous commercially important crops such as cotton, Gossypium hirsutum, and okra, Abelmotius esculentus. Many New Englanders may be quite fond of a relative of hibiscus mochuetos, hollyhock, Alcea rosea. It's considered one of our, quote, traditional ornamental flowers, though its arrival to North America was quite recent, being native to Western China and surrounding areas. It likely arrived in Europe in the 15th century, traveling with colonists to the Americas in the following centuries. As far as New England natives go, there is actually only one other representative of the family Malvaceae present here, and a distant cousin at that, Tilia americana, the American linden or basswood tree. Plants in Malvaceae are readily identifiable based on their floral morphology. Large, showy blooms are the standard in Malvaceae, and hibiscus mochitos is no exception. Ranging from dark red to pink and even white, the flowers come in an impressive array of hues. The morphology of the reproductive structures is particularly remarkable. Topped by a heavily divided five-lobed stigma, the anthers seem to emerge right from the style. However, what is actually happening here is that the stamens have fused themselves into a cone surrounding the style, each individual anther breaking off at a different point as they sheathe around the pistil. An interesting factoid about hibiscus and their close relatives is that unlike nearly all other plant anthers, which contain two theca, a conglomerate containing two microsporangia, the specific organs within meiosis is undergone and gametes are produced, Hibiscus mochuetos anthers are monothecal, containing only one theca, a rather uncommon trait in the plant kingdom and not even universal to the family Malvaceae. The fruits, when they mature, form dry, dehiscent capsules. 
Hibiscus mochuetos is considered a forb, a vegetative plant that is not considered a grass or an ephemeral, but does not produce woody tissue like a shrub or tree. Rather, it grows an entirely new stem and leaves each season, emerging from underground roots storing sugars over the winter. The leaves are large and alternate, very soft and accumulate with dentate margins. With the plant topping out over four feet tall and even taller in optimal conditions, it is an impressive feat that it effectively starts over each season. Thankfully, Hibiscus mochuetos is a native plant seen very regularly in cultivation. I recall even a boring stale country club I worked at had this plant nestled in with all too common non-natives like lilac, hydrangea, and daylilies. Readily available and deserving of its less common name, hardy hibiscus, Hibiscus mochuetos matures relatively quickly, providing beautiful productive blooms for years to come. Easily able to tolerate northeastern winters, at least in southern New England and along the coast, it just needs a generous watering if kept in a traditional garden setting away from standing water. A true testament to its hardiness is its usage in urban habitat restoration projects. Look up the Urban Rivers Project in Chicago, where they've actually planted hibiscus mochuetos on rafts over the Chicago River, aiding in the removal of pollutants and re-establishment of nesting grounds for native birds and wildlife. If it can handle the Chicago River, it can handle your yard. As always, I hope you learned something, and I hope you take the time to explore a local wetland or similar habitat. They offer a look at a cast of species not usually found in the forests and meadows and should be appreciated. I hope you have a nice day.